Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about our deepest, darkest moments because it's important to know that in our darkest moments, beauty is still all around us. And I remember hearing a story. There's been a couple of things that have happened. Well, there's been lots of things that have happened in my life. But I remember hearing a story on the radio where there was this lady and her little boy had cancer and he lost a leg. And I remember the radio station host saying to the mum, oh, you poor thing. And the mum quickly turning around and saying, I'm not a poor thing. I'm so fortunate because my son has still got another leg and he's got his life and not everyone's as fortunate as that. So she flipped it in a second. Now, I don't know about you, but thinking about having your child going through cancer is would be such a challenging, challenging thing. Yet she flipped it around. She flipped the script. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Recently, the last couple of weeks, we're building a house and it's been so challenging at this time because it's COVID, we're going through COVID, there's been lockdowns and everything in the last uh, couple of years. And so it's taken us 13 months so far and we're still building our home. And we've had challenges with all sorts of things from we haven't had tradies or the product. Uh, so we're at the end of it and we get vandalised. And the person comes in, get, goes into the house, knocks out two walls and then vandalises it with their tagging and then goes to the toilet in the house, like on the floor, which is just disgusting. And it was a shock because we hadn't had that happen to us before. And then the following week, we get vandalised again and, and this person kicks through the door, grabs paint that was left over from the painter and starts just throwing the paint all over our brand new home. And I remember just the feeling because we saw, we, we went to the house and we looked in the win window and we were, my husband and I were shocked because we saw this paint everywhere and we knew that we'd been vandalised again and the feeling was just awful. It was a feeling of, invasion of privacy someone being in your own house and then being you know someone doing that to somebody else and then I knew I had to flip the script I couldn't sit in that fear of it happening again I couldn't sit in the the anger of why it happened I had to flip the script and so I disassociated myself from it. So I, what that means is I separated myself from the event. And I said to myself, that's, that is all the builders, you know, that's the builder's responsibility. They're taking ownership of that. If anything happens, they need to fix it. And so I'm separating myself from that. And then I then decided I needed to take some action as well. So the following day I got letters and I did a letter drop throughout the community where my house is and spoke to lots and lots of different neighbours and, and, and that was fantastic. It was something that I felt good doing, meeting people, having conversations with the community and working together so that these type of things don't happen in the future in our community. And so taking action was a great thing. So I want to talk to you guys today about four simple things that I think are really important to flip that script and to change different events in your life. Because whether you've had challenges in the past, you might be going through challenges right now, or the challenges that you will be going through in the future, because Life is created with challenges built in. 
None, none of us are immune to challenges. And so it's really important how we manage these challenges when they arise. So the first thing I want to talk about is changing the state of your being. We all know that when we're doing sadness or depression, how our body, what do we do with our body, how our body reacts? So we might look down, we might hunch our shoulders, we might uh, then with our body, we might walk slowly. And then what are we telling ourselves? So what's, what's, what are we saying in our head? And what's the tonality of how we're saying that? It might be, oh, why is that happening to me? You know, all those negative, that negative language that we say with that tone of voice, you know, it's all, it's like a little a recipe. You, know, you hold your body in a certain way. You say these things in your head, a certain tonality way, and the words that you say all make up your emotion. And it creates how you feel. And so it's really important to change our state. So you can start by firstly changing how your body is. So you might put your shoulders back, your head up. You might start walking fast. You might go outside into nature and start walking and go for a walk. And then think about what are you saying in your head? Say some different things. So it's changing your state of being. And the important thing is to know and I think this is so empowering that you can change it like that in an instant. Now, imagine this. Imagine when, you know, when you've had a cold, you might have the flu and you're at home and you're all sniffly and oh, you're tired and you, know, you might be talking like this because your nose is all stuffed and you haven't had much sleep. You might be dragging your feet. You've got your dressing gown on. It's all... It's all like that. And then the phone rings and what do you do? You go and pick it up and you go, hello, because you're sick, right? But what about if you picked up that phone and the person on the other end says, you have just won $1 million and you knew it was true, right? It was true. You just won a $1 million. Do you think you'd say, great, and then just to put the phone down and walk slowly away into bed and snuggle up in bed and I don't think you would. You'd probably change your state in an instant. It could be, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Is that real? You might then get start doing a bit of a dance when you're off the phone. You might then get on the phone and, and ring your relatives, ring your partner, ring your friends post on Facebook with a big smile and a nice little selfie, you know, suddenly everything changes in an instant and your body changes with it. And I'm sure there's been times where that's happened to you. And so that's the power of changing your state. And the other important thing, so number two that I want to talk to you about is how we reframe what's happening. So how do we flip it? How do we Turn it around, change the shape of what's happening, change how we look at things. It's like having this event in a frame and then you say, you know what, I don't want it in that frame. I'm going to change it so it looks differently. And it's interesting. I heard on, I saw this video on the internet and it was telling a story about these two people in aged care. So there was this one lady in aged care and she's got Alzheimer's and she was a little bit disruptive because what she would do is she would grab people's food off their plate and then eat it. <laughs> and some of the other people in the aged care facility were getting upset. And then there's this other lady who was in the facility, but in another location in the facility, and she had a different problem. So what she was doing is not eating hardly at all because she believed that there was poison in her food. And then some genius came up with a thought, what about if we put them together? And so there's two problems. There's a problem with a lady eating people's food off the plate and then there's a problem with a lady not eating at all and thinking all the food's poison. So we they put them together and then what happened is that they told the lady that wasn't eating 
that this lady that was taking food off her plate was testing the food for her. And so as she would test the food, then she'd think it was okay and then she'd eat the rest of the food. So it's a reframe of the situation because firstly you've got two problems and then suddenly working together, it's not so much of a problem anymore. It's interesting, isn't it? And so when we're reframing something, there's a context that we can look at. So by the context, we can change the circumstances of the setting. So if someone says, I wish I didn't procrastinate so much, if you change the context, you could say procrastination is a great skill if you want to stop overeating. So you've just flipped what they've said. And they're like, oh, well, maybe it, it can be a good skill, can't it? So you're just flipping the context of what they've said. And the other important thing is the meaning that we give it. I talk a lot about this. So whatever's happening in the world, what are you making it mean? And so someone could say she yelled at me because she doesn't like me. Or you could say, well, she yelled at you because she does love you, love you and she cares about you and she wants the best for you. So you just flip it. Same circumstance but changing the meaning. And if you think about the story of the two old ladies at the aged care, that's exactly what you do. We did change the context, change the situation around, and then that changed the meaning. And I love these two quotes that I'll read. So one quote is for the context. So this is a, a quote that I thought was quite amusing. So changing the context. So think about the context. Karate is a form of martial arts in which people who have had years and years of training can, using only their hands and feet, make some of the worst movies in history of the world. <laughs> so you just flipped it around oh okay suddenly it's the worst movies and that's from Dave Barry that quote I thought that was quite amusing and then you've got another quote and this quote is for the meaning I am not a vegetarian because I love animals I am a vegetarian because I hate plants <laughs> and that's Whitney Brown that said that and so again it's just flipping it it's like this unexpected flip and, and meaning that uh, you didn't expect. And so if we can do that in our own lives and change the context and then change the meaning if it's not serving us, um, that can be a great thing to do and challenge yourself because we make so many assumptions in our life. Now, are these changing the context and changing the meaning true? I'm not sure. But are your assumptions true? I'm not sure about that either. So it's all about how we can challenge ourselves so that we can deal with different, different challenges that come by. So a couple of tips I want to say with reframing is one great tip is when you've got all these negative thoughts happening or something happens in your life that's overwhelming you uh, and it's, it's affecting your emotions uh, and it's really important to get it out. So a great thing is to write stuff down. So write down all of that negative stuff. Uh, and you can verbalise it too if you want. So you can write it down and verbalise it to somebody or you can verbalise it just out loud to yourself or you could even just get a, a recording and, and say it out loud just to get it out and then look at it. And what I say is disassociate from it. So a little bit with what I did in regards to the vandalism, I took myself away from it as if it wasn't me and then I saw it from more of a helicopter view. So I gave it to my builders. I gave the problem in my head to the builders and then I separated myself from that. And so you can do the same thing. You can actually look at it as if it's not your challenge, as if it's somebody else's. And I love to look at it as if it's your best friend's challenge. And so you might read your notes that you wrote down and look at it from an aspect that that's your best friend and you need to look at this challenge and how this person is thinking 
in a logical way and be able to coach that person. And so some great questions you can ask this person separating yourself. You can ask things like, is this really true what you're writing down? And some of it might be. So you might then say, well, is this helpful? And is it helpful for me to be thinking this? You might ask, how can you make this better? How do you need to change how you think about this? I love that question. That's one of my favourite ones that I use. So how, how do you need to change the way that you think about things right now? How can you minimise this problem? How will you grow from this? What's good about this? Now, that's, that can be really challenging and I know that I've had challenges in my life and, and I've asked myself what's good about this and the first thing that comes back is nothing. <laughs> I say to myself, nothing's good about this. But then I'll say, hold on a minute, there has to be something good about this. Find something good about this. And then when I do that, I will find something. In the most challenging times, I will find something that is good. And even if it's just that I know that I will grow from this moment. And what support do you need right now is a great question. And so being able to reframe by looking at the context and looking at the meaning and then getting those negative thoughts out on paper and verbalising them sometimes and then disassociating from the challenge and then coaching that best friend that's got that challenge by coming up with those great questions will all help in regards to dealing with the challenge. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is, which was the last question that I put on your coaching was what support do you need right now? It's so important for us to know that there's always time that we can put our hand up for support. Often we don't do that. We soldier on and sometimes people might be feeling embarrassed, feeling that they're weak by not, by putting their hand up. And so they soldier on on their own. But the, the interesting thing is that when you put your hand up, for support, it's actually extremely courageous because you embrace vulnerability and you open yourself up. And it's such a gift for the other person often to be helping you. And so there's times when you want to put your hand up and say, I need some support. So that could be your friend, your family member. It could be a coach, a counsellor someone that can support you through those times. Now, if you need urgent support, make sure that you do that. If you need to get on the phone and contact Lifeline, uh, depending where you are in, in the world, you'll have your different services, whether it be uh, Lifeline or some sort of place where you need to get that support, uh, your psych psychological support. Uh, and pick that, that phone up and do that. But then there's other support that you can do as well. So it could be you need some support in skills. So you might say, I need to go and do this course, or it might be I need some inspiration uh, to be able to go forward. And, and you might read a book, you might listen to a podcast. So that's also support. So look at how the resources around you as well of how you can support yourself in, in challenging times. And the last thing that I want to say is taking action because taking action can really alleviate and make you feel, alleviate some of that stress and also make you feel that you're proactive and getting something done and making a difference. And so um, that certainly happened for me when we were vandalised and I decided the next day I'm going to go to the community, I'm going to hand out these pamphlets that I created, I'm going to talk to as many people as I can and I felt that I did something valuable and I also felt that something great came out of a really quite negative situation because I met some really amazing people by doing that. And so 
taking action can be a really great way whatever it could be it doesn't have to be massive action if you want to take massive action great if you don't even just one little thing that you can do that's going to help your situation one little bite sized piece of action that you take that can make all the difference and sometimes that can be a roll on effect for bigger things to come so in summarizing what we're talking about is really making sure we change the state of our being by with our body language what we're saying the tone of our voice that we reframe we change how we think thing think of things so through the context through the meaning making sure that we write things down or verbalize and get all that negativity out ensuring that we then uh, after getting that out making sure that we uh, we really disassociate from it we get away from it and, and coach like we're coaching our best friend making sure that we're supporting we're asking for support uh, from people and supporting ourselves in our challenge and the last thing is to make sure that we take some action that's going to help us in the challenge that we've got so I trust that that's helped with some really great tips in regards to any challenges that you have. And I want to finish off with this great quote from Wayne Dyer. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Thanks, guys.